orbiting 250 miles above, the space station provides us with the ultimate view of planet Earth. From this perspective, we ask our guests to engage with six questions that orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness. For the next few minutes, this is, is our wonder space. space. Welcome to the 111th episode of the Wonder Space podcast, which is an expression of a family trust called Panapa. My name is Steve Cole, and since September 2020, I have asked the same six questions to over 100 people from around the world. People such as Marwa Al Sabuni, who is an architect and author, who made the decision to continue living in Homs in Syria to be part of rebuilding the city that is being destroyed by war. Her Wonder Space episode is number 78. We are thrilled once again to be drawing from the wonder of Ask Nature, who look to nature for inspiration to solve design problems in a regenerative way. Here is another moment to help us rewonder. Spring tails are tiny relatives of insects and crustaceans less than six millimeters long. They live in wet habitats among decaying plant matter. Since they respire through their skin, repelling moisture is critically important for their survival. They do this with a uniquely textured surface. Springtails have relatively large bumps that are covered in smaller primary granules. Made from crisscrossing folds in the skin, they are arranged in a regular lattice with overhangs that trap a layer of air against the body and prevent water and other substances from contacting it directly. Water's surface tension makes it relatively easy to repel, and many organisms have rough surfaces that function in this way. Springtail skin is remarkable in that it resists a far wider range of substances, including oils and other low surface tension liquids, even when subjected to high pressure, an ability perhaps even more impressive than the pogo stick appendage that earned springtails their name. This week on Wonder Space, we orbit with Mustafa Salama, who was born in Kuwait to Palestinian refugee parents and went on to become the first Palestinian Jordanian to climb Mount Everest. He was one of only 20 people to ever climb the seven summits and conquer the South Pole and the North Pole, known as the Explorer's Grand Slam. Today, he is a professional mountain climber, speaker and author who has raised over $6 million for various non-profits. The film rights to this epic story have also been agreed and producers are just beginning to pull together a dream team to tell this most remarkable story. With this expansive overview of Earth, I start by asking Mustafa, if we could do a fly past over any part of the world that is significant to you, which place, city or country would it be and why? You know, there were two that I, I, I thought about, but I think the, the first one will definitely fly past over the Himalayas. And, and you know, the Himalayas has been, uh, first is the home of the world, tallest peak, including Mount Everest, which is uh, the highest point in Earth. And as someone who climbed Everest and completed the Grand Slam of Mountaineer and, and Everest was the, you know, the icing in the cake, you know, I have a, an amazing, deep appreciation for the majesty and the beauty of 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 this mountain and uh, and the people in around this mountain. And uh, additionally, the Himalayas uh, is a challenging and unforgiving environment, and which would be naturally drew for someone. Uh, who enjoy adventure and pushing themselves into their limit. And this is what uh, I definitely did. And and also I thought about something else, which is the first ever mountain I climbed. And I think it was the the milestone of my journey was in the Alaskan range and Denali, the highest point in North America. And this mountain had played uh, a significant uh, role in my life because it was the first mountain and from this mountain His Majesty King Abdullah took me seriously after I climbed this mountain and then the fun that started to come and this has led 
to my journey towards becoming an explorer and inspiration and the speaker. Mustafa, give us a glimpse into your life story so far with an emphasis on what you're doing currently. I started my journey from a refugee camp and then I uh, have to leave Kuwait because of the Gulf War to Jordan. Uh, I finished my high school. I couldn't go to university. I have to help my dad. There is 10, 10 of us. And then from there, I worked as a waiter for three years until somebody told me if I want to go to London while I'm serving his table. And he said, my brother is the Jordanian ambassador in London. So from this refugee camp to the most prestigious place in London, which is Belgravia Place and Solana Square. I work with the Jordan ambassador. I spoke no English whatsoever. One year with the ambassador. And then I worked in Richmond uh, because uh, there were no English at all. I worked in a kitchen for five years washing dishes. I've learned English from watching Sesame Street early morning, writing 10 words and, and five sentences. And then from there, I... I I had uh, saved enough money to go to university because my dream was to become a general manager for a five-star hotel. And after watching Braveheart in the cinema, I thought Scotland is my place. This is where my freedom. But a year later, I, I watched Trainspotting and I thought that's exactly where I'm going to go. And this is where I went. I studied at Queen Margaret University, I, uh, International Hospitality and Tourist Management. I joined the Sheraton in Edinburgh. I become the food and beverage manager. And then... I know I have two, three years to become uh, a, a general manager for a five-star hotel, but in 2004, after I uh, uh, had a dream, I wake up from a dream, I saw myself on the top of the mountain climbing uh, Mount Everest, praying for peace, no idea about climbing, never climbed a mountain in my life. So in this 2004, with a vivid dream, um, I pursued my mountaineer and uh, uh, and then in 2008, I became the first Jordanian to climb Mount Everest in Jordan Independence Day. I was knighted by the King of Jordan. And I continue doing my stuff to climb the Seventh Summit. Then I learn how to ski. I skied the South Pole, North Pole, Greenland. And then in 2016, I become one of 13 people in the world to do the Grand Slam. I, I think the biggest challenge was for me to... Uh, have people believe an idea that I had. This is, was a dream. This is a guy who never climbed a mountain in their life or been in, in a sleeping bag. Uh, is the guy who was the only form of exercise was in a weekend, e e going clapping, staying for three days to recover and then go back to school. That was my only experience of fitness I, I knew. And I believed, I always believed, that everything that you do is possible if you start the change within yourself. And I that's that's what I did. You know, mountaineering is not an easy thing. Polar adventure is not an easy thing. So it's not easy to ski the South Pole in 55 days and survive the whole of the days by eating 6,000 calories, sledging behind you, 180 kilogram. But because I always believed in the cause and why I'm doing this from the first place. And it was always to help somebody to do something that uh, uh, will help a community, will help my country, will help also the people around me. And, uh, you know, in, in 2004, I found myself in the mountain for the first time. And I knew there were lots of challenges, but I treated the mountain as... Uh, a place of worship and that's why I was connected to it spiritually. Every single challenge you have in front of you, it's going to make you stronger and there is a way to overcome these challenges. If you really want to, if you are passionate about what you do, definitely you're going to overcome any challenges in your life. In 2016, I have published my first book, Dreams of a Refugee with Bloomsbury, which is going to be a movie sooner and then I published two children book after that and another book about the spirituality in the mountain. I'm passionate about inspiring and motivation children and youth. And I work with corporate companies to tell everyone that everything is possible. Where on earth is your place of reset or recharge? Lakes for me is one of the wonder of nature and that truly excite and inspire me. 
uh, just the natural beauty that combined with the peacefulness and the tranquility. I am so much drawn into it. And I found being near a lake has a calling effect on me. And it gives me so much imagination. I always think clearer and I know where I'm going when I'm uh, around the lake. And also, you know, a place to reset is when I'm with my kids because they give me so much energy. They have so much stuff to do. I have four boys. They're all into sport. Um, and, um, you know, there is so many places when I'm in the mountain, I recharge. Uh, you know, I, I try to be so open in every single way that wherever I am, where whoever I am with, I should definitely uh, have that opportunity to reset, to recharge. So it doesn't matter where you are. You can be in the port, you can be in the mountain, you can be in the lakes, which is my favorite. Uh, you can be with your kids, I can be with my wife. And the, the, all, all these, uh, it's a possible places for reset and recharge. What wonder of the natural world excites you the most? I would say mountains, definitely mountains. I mean, I wouldn't. Mountains is... It just, you know, for me is the most spiritual uh, places that you can be with. You can be yourself. You can, you know, you are facing always something bigger than you. So your ego is definitely locked somewhere before you go to the mountain. And that's why you become yourself. And sometimes, you you know, when you're in the mountain in front of all this majestic mountain, you always feel useless. And it's nice sometimes to feel useless. It's nice to feel that uh, you're worth nothing in front of all this beauty and nature. And this is will give you a power uh, when you come back to reality, when you come back to sea level, uh, that... It gives you so much power that it you become so humble with everything that you do, with everyone that you meet. And this is a great, beautiful uh, uh, way of living uh, life. And I always think that, you know, we all have Everest in our life and Everest can be absolutely anything. It could be a mountain, it could be your kids, it can be your education, it could be your career. And uh, you can get in the top of the summit every time, but the summit is not the most important things. The summit is the icing in the cake, is the journey that takes you, is the people that you meet, is what you give to people, that what always uh, count. Mustafa, what is your story of hopefulness that's not your own, about a person, business or non-profit who are doing amazing things for the world? You know, I would definitely say King Hussein Cancer Center, which is a, a, a cancer center that helped people all, all, all over the Arab world. And I'm going to tell you a story very briefly. In 2012, I went into this King Hussein Cancer Center to do a talk for kids. And an 11 years old kids uh, who she, her immune system is very low. The nurse asked me if I can go to her room to to do a talk like I did to the uh, to the rest of the kids there. And I took my laptop, I sat down with her, I showed her a video of Everest, I told her about Mount Everest and what I did, and she asked me three questions that affected me. And she said to me, how long did it take you to climb the mountain? I said, 72 days. She said, how long did you stay in the summit? I said, 45 minutes. What did you take with you to make you safe? I said, you know, we take rope, we wear harness. And she said, you know, I've been climbing my own Everest in the past three years. And every time I come to this center, I'm in the top of my pain more than 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, two, three. Every time I come here and I come here twice a week and I always look at hope, people who can come and help. And I think he should climb mountain for hope, not just for taking the flag. And she's 11 years old. And I decided from 2012 that I will always climb for cause. And that's why I started something called Lowest to Highest Forecast. And Lowest is the king. And in Jordan, we have the Dead Sea is the lowest point in earth. And I go to highest uh, in different continent. And I start bringing celebrities, people who are known, who can fundraise money. And I was able from that 
meeting from that year to fundraise more than six million dollars to Ken Gosei Santa to refugees. I took the first man in a wheelchair up to Kilimanjaro, the first blind Arab to take up to the things. Just recently, I took an Ukrainian refugee, an Afghani refugee, a Syrian refugee, all have a medical problem to the top of Kilimanjaro and fundraising lots of money for different charities. So there is so many amazing people out there who do amazing stuff. But I would say, you know, for me, Kengo Senka Center, maybe the honor of who help refugees all over, UNICEF who help refugees uh, with their education. Um, yeah, so, so many people. Finally, as we prepare to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, what insight, wisdom or question would you like to leave with us? I always take this beautiful quote from uh, the Quran. It says uh, that God does not change what on us until we want it to change. So any change you want to do out of you, you have to start with yourself. And, uh, um, you know, we all have to remember it's not always about the destination, but rather the journey that leads you there. You know, lastly, I would leave you with uh, a question that reflect on what legacy do you want to leave behind? What is it? It's not taking the, mount, uh, the flag in the top mountain. It's not to become the first Arab or the first Jordanian. No, there is more important than that. It's a legacy. It's what you left behind who did you help what is the people that you affected that's going to be the most important and what is uh, it's in your personal and professional life consider uh, how can we use our talent and ability to make a positive impact to this world that we live in because this is a beautiful world and i know this planet can look after itself in its own but we can come in to just spice this beautiful world uh, and, and affect the people who will come after us to take a different way and by living with purpose and intention and good intention. And uh, you can inspire people to leave lasting legacy that makes the world a better place when you have the good intention. Uh, everything that you do with the good intention is definitely achievable. To find out more about the work and story of Mustafa, go to mustafasalama.com. In his story of hopefulness, Mustafa talked about the King Hussein Cancer Center in Jordan, and you can find a link on Mustafa's episode page at ourwonder.space. I want to thank Mustafa for joining us on Wonder Space. Let's continue to share our stories of hopefulness that makes a name for someone else. We need them like never before. Thanks for listening.